Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Acts video. All right, we've got another list video to check out, break down, and to give feedback on. And this one is Top 20 Battles That Changed History. All right, this is by Watch Mojo, who do a lot of list videos. And sometimes their choices can be kind of odd. So let's go through these together. Original link is down below, and let's get started. You know, as I'm starting uh, starting things up here, I'm trying to think of, you know, stuff that should be in there. Um, Watch Mojo is very American centric with their videos, so I'm sure we're going to see a lot of that. We'll probably see D Day. Um, we'll see. Yeah, hopefully, they, they better put like Stalingrad on there. Um, maybe Battle of the Marne from World War I, uh, Siege of Vienna. I mean, there's so many, but we'll see. We'll see how like focused they are on, you know, like American history. So. Finally, the bombardment ceased. Battle song. Okay, whistles of the fair. officers shrieked out along well, the front. Well, that wasn't in 1993. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks <laughs> from a for video the from top 20 battles that changed history. Okay. Cease fire! Cease fire! For this list, we're looking at wartime military engagement that had significant impacts on human history. Which of these fascinates you? What would the world look like if these battles had gone differently? Let us know in the comments. Okay. Number 20. So it's specific battle battles, Actium. not just wars. After Actium. Julius okay. Caesar's assassination, rulership of Rome was shared between Octavian, Mark Antony, okay. and yep. for a time, Marcus Similius so Lepidus. Octavian. Antony married Octavian's sister, but fell in love with Egyptian queen Cleopatra. Right. He even formally recognized her son Caesarion as Caesar's true son and heir. Octavian suspects his rival has been seduced by her power. He realizes that together, Antony and Cleopatra Pose a threat Is that James ambition. Woods? This led to Narrating? civil war with Octavian, which on September right. 2nd, 31 BC, culminated in the Battle of Actium in the Ionian Sea. Yeah, naval battle. It ended with Antony defeated and taking his own life. With Cleopatra. As did Cleopatra. Octavian became the first Roman emperor, right. taking the name Augustus Caesar and leading Rome into an era of prosperity and expansion, now known as the Pax Romana. After she and Antony die, Octavian assumes the name Caesar Augustus that is and James founds Woods. the Roman Empire. Had Octavian lost the Battle of Actium, it would have been Mark both Antony. Roman and Egyptian history would have taken very different courses. So you can say that the modern world evolves out of the events resulting from the Battle of Actium. Number 19. Hey, okay, hold on. So like, okay, so my thoughts, okay, so... There's going to be an emperor of Rome, basically, right? Julius Caesar created the power vacuum. Then he got these two guys who are very close to him and want to take that up. And the difference, I guess, would be Mark Antony would win. He'd probably become emperor. Um, maybe, I don't know if they... And then, then with Cleopatra becomes his his empress, I guess. Now, you get, what do you guys think? Like, okay, if Mark Antony is is in charge, how big of a... Like, how how different would he have been from octavian i know a lot of you guys are really really deep into rome and may know a little bit more about his politics because i don't know specifically with antony do you think it would be a major difference but nevertheless it does establish the first emperor of rome so i think that's i mean that's worth a top 20. all right siege of yorktown all right final battle of the american revolution yeah i mean one of the criterias i think i would put in this is like if the war if, if, if this battle, like, didn't go the way it would, is it likely, though, that just the next battle would have gone that way? You know what I mean? Like, it just would have delayed the inevitable. Don't I think that kind of would have happened at Yorktown? Let's let's hear what that Yorktown. Just a decisive battle in the American Revolutionary War. The Siege of Yorktown took place decisive, throughout the fall of 1781. At his headquarters in New York, Commander-in-Chief George Washington saw the present crisis unfold and observed... We are at the end of our tether, and now or never, our deliverance must come. On one side was George Washington and France, and on the other, Lord Cornwallis and Great Britain. And the French After Navy. nearly a month of fighting, Cornwallis Blockading the escape. The British march from the ruined remains of Yorktown. They stack their weapons and surrender their flag. This led to the Peace of Paris which marked the end of the first British Empire, with the 13 later. colonies forming the United States of America. The success of the American the last Revolution battle. also helped inspire the French Revolution in 1789. The Western world would look I mean, the revolution, very different today know, had Britain won at Yorktown. When Lord North French Revolution probably would have happened anyways. I mean, even if the even if the Americans had lost, French still going in, putting in all that debt 
would still, you know, uh, would would still do that, you know, still still provide the economic problems that France is going to have. So the British prime minister learns of the defeat a month later. He blurts, oh, God, it is all over. Number 18. <laughs> all right. So Yorktown's one of those things, though, where like the war was becoming less and less popular. So like, again, what a criteria would be like, OK, if Yorktown hadn't have been a success for the allies does that mean like the war would have ended differently probably not right the war is becoming increasingly unpopular british are less and less invested in it and like american independence is probably going to happen anyways so i don't know i i probably put actium like before that or you know like at a, at a, at a better number than that all right battle butter the battle of butter also known as the Day of the Criterion, the Battle of Badr ensured the survival and expansion of Islam. Brothers! A lot of critical battles in early Islamic in history in that first generation. Muhammad and his followers fled persecution in Mecca, moving to Medina. Two years and later, came back. Muhammad sought to raid a Meccan caravan at the town of Badr. What is this the video? The caravan requested help from Mecca, who sent an army to the rescue, led by polytheist leader Abu Jahl. The Muslims broke the Meccans' charge and emerged victorious. The Battle of Badr is highly regarded by practicing Muslims, as it strengthened Muhammad's power and allowed Islam to flourish into the world religion it sure. is today. Yeah. However, the historicity of the battle is debated, yeah. as written accounts didn't appear until two centuries later. As as are most records from the these early Islamic encounters, they're way after. Really hard to get um, really good sources on this stuff. What's this movie? Number 17. Okay, that makes, okay, that is big. That's way, way more, probably more, or it is more important than the other two. Um, just because you gotta understand that the Islamic community at that time was very small, right? Given if we're gonna take everything we're saying here at face value about how that battle went and, and, and all those things, um, because it was still a small group. And if they had lost there, Islam might have never developed. Right now to develop. Most Muslims might have died right there, especially with Muhammad. And then, boom, Islam gone. That is a major world changer, right? So that definitely is deserving a list of a list there. All right, Kane. All right, let's get some back to the, the Romans. Battle of baby. Kanai. Now he prepares to face him again in what will be one of the greatest battles of all will time. Will Rome fall? The Battle of Cannae. It was a good choice. Between the Roman Republic good and Carthage during the Second Punic War, the 20. Battle of Cannae was a disaster for the Romans. Yeah. They outnumbered Carthage almost two oh, to wait. one, but suffered nearly 12 times the casualties. Yeah, duh. Led no, by this, the great general okay. Hannibal, the Carthaginians they end up losing used a anyways. pincer movement to surround their foes. Of the 86,000 Romans who fought in the battle, only about 15,000 survived. Yeah, was, the Romans uh, are surrounded. I uh, hopefully you saw the oversimplified video. Um, check out my coverage if you want to see that. And they went into such good detail about that. I didn't understand how devastating, have a devastating, like, uh, how devastatingly lopsided that was and how many died when you looked at percentages of Roman soldiers. It was nuts. I, I, I underestimated it big time. Well, it doesn't stop there. Hannibal's leadership has influenced military strategy for millennia. The battle also changed the manner in which the Roman Republic fought. Having suffered a humiliating defeat, the Romans introduced reforms to address the flaws in their military strategy. This helped them become a stronger army and led to the flourishing of ancient Rome. But no matter how many fields Hannibal's men torch, but they or how many towns they pillage, too. the Romans will not be drawn into another canny. Number 16. Okay, so yeah, I don't know about that. If if it was like the Romans stopped, you know, the the um the Carthaginians at this time and preserved Rome. Like that would be a big deal, but okay. It was a success ends up being a short term success by the, the Carthaginians and they end up losing. So like, to me, that wouldn't be higher than like the battle of Badr, like we just saw, you know what I mean? The battle of Hattin. The battle of the horns of Hattin, as it's also known, saw the kingdom of Jerusalem and the crusader states facing off against the Ayyubid Sultanate under Saladin. Ayyub. God wills it. It was another great massacre. Saladin's forces saw few casualties, while most of the Christian forces were wiped out. Yeah. As a result, much of the Holy Land again fell under Muslim almost. control. 
Pope Urban III reportedly died of shock upon hearing the news, and the Third Crusade was eventually launched to retake Jerusalem. Yeah. However, it was it unsuccessful, and Jerusalem First one was only under successful. control for decades. First I thought we were fighting for God, then I realized we were fighting for wealth and land. Number 15. I, I, I overall liked Kingdom of Heaven. I thought that was a pretty good movie. You know what I mean? Um, I know there's some criticisms of it and stuff, but definitely showed like the brutality, you know, and all that. So, okay. I think that's a good one to put on there because um, this is where, because remember the um, Christian Crusaders won the first crusade, right? Their control of Jerusalem, they have the kingdom of Jerusalem. And this then provides, because they lose, they get booted out of Jerusalem. And from this point on, from that point till the present, it's going to be ruled by you know, Islamic caliphates. So, um, yeah, I think that is, that is pretty important. Um, it did change a lot made that, that so the Holy land will be an Islamic land. The battle All right. Of uh, what do we got? Battle of Adwa. Okay. Africa. Adwa. By the end of the 19th century, most of Africa was under European Ethiopia. Control. The only independent areas that remained were Liberia and Ethiopia. In 1895, the Kingdom of Italy attempted to conquer the Ethiopian Empire in the first Italo-Ethiopian War. Um, by the way, should I don't obviously I'm not going to talk about Liberia here, but um, the reason why Liberia was able to maintain its independence, so like I said, only two African states basically maintain their independence during the scramble for Africa: Ethiopia, which is going to militarily defend itself here. The other one was Liberia, and that's because it was a protectorate of the United States. And if you don't know about it, it's a really interesting story. It was designed to be a place where Africans, African-Americans, like upon emancipation of slavery, would go to Africa, right? There was this belief by a lot of people that uh, former slaves would not be able to assimilate into American culture and that Liberia would be a place that Africans would go to, right? Whether forced or unforced. And a few thousand went. It wasn't obviously a massive thing, but it's a really interesting concept, I guess. All right, Battle of Adwa. I'm going to come back and we'll see what they uh, say here, but I definitely have something to say. Lasting almost two years, it culminated in the Battle of Adwa. The Ethiopian forces Menelik. under Menelik II emerged victorious, Menelik. leading to the Treaty of Addis Ababa, which saw Treaty Ethiopia Ababa. recognized as an independent state. Ethiopia's yeah. victory went on to inspire African nationalists fighting for decolonization, as well as leaders of pan But not for another 50 years. Too many historians, the Battle of Adwa was a stunning victory for Ethiopia. Number 14. Okay, so I, I, th I like this being on the list because it was basically the only successful african resistance in the, the the essentially in the scramble for africa the entire african continent got just wiped out in resistance battles because of the difference in military technology um italy under king menelak were very prepared for it they had some good weapons and were able to actually defend themselves they were the only ones to do that so i think that alone is being worth of did it change history no like it change history, but it is significant. It is very significant as like that one successful moment here for Africans at this time. Okay. They're going to get their independence, you know, later, but it's going to be decades later after some, you know, a very uh, uh, brutal and, and um, exploitative decades of European imperialism here that won't end till really after world war two. So good. All right. Battle of Vienna. Okay. Good. Stops the Ottoman advance into Europe. The Battle of Vienna. The Ottoman Habsburg Wars between the Ottoman the and Holy Austrian. Roman Empires raged for 300 years. Fought through the summer of 1683, the Battle of Vienna marked an important turning point. The fall of Vienna would open the door for the Ottomans to conquer all of Western Christendom. The Ottomans had laid and siege the to Vienna for two months. Arrived. Allied with the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the Holy Roman Empire was able to defeat them and lift the siege. By the evening of the 12th of September, 1683, the battle was won and Vienna was free. In the aftermath, European nations formed an alliance called the Holy League to we, prevent further Ottoman expansion into Europe. And in 1697, quality. the Ottomans sued for peace. The Treaty of Karlovitz two years peace. later marked the end of the Ottoman Empire's imperial ambitions in Europe. That day well, they just, sealed no, the fate of Ottoman rule no, in Europe. No, <laughs> they're going to hold on to Europe. 
uh, for another couple. Uh, this was in the 1600s all the way. I mean, until they, they start losing most of Europe around the turn of the 20th century. So they don't expand further, if that's what they mean there. They were still going to rule Europe for a couple centuries. A document underlined the scale of the Ottoman defeat. The Treaty of Karlovitz. Number 13. Okay. The yeah. So essentially the Ottoman Empire could have expanded further. Some people say, you know, if they'd gotten through Vienna, that then Central Europe could have been, you know, rolled over and who knows about that. But yeah, I think that's significant. I said that at the beginning that um, I think that should be on a um, on a on a uh, top list. OK, Siege of Constantinople. OK, they're doing the 8th century one. OK, because I think that the 1453 one better be top five. Siege of Constantinople. Lasting a full year in the late 8th century, the there were so many of Constantinople, of Constantinople saw the Byzantine Empire, otherwise known as the Eastern Roman Empire, defending its capital against the Umayyad Caliphate. The Muslim forces were eventually defeated, suffering heavy casualties in the process. This significantly demoralized the army, and they abandoned all hope of taking Still don't Constantinople. Know the result was a relatively stable division of territories that remained consistent for the next two centuries. In short, this battle effectively prevented Muslim expansion into Europe. Had the Umayyad Caliphate won the siege of Constantinople, Europe would have fallen under Muslim control, and history it, would look will very anyways. different indeed. So the difference would have been that it it would have <laughs> fallen. So this is the 1700s. They actually take over in the 1400s. So another 700 years, I guess, of Christian rule of Constantinople. So I, I, I mean, that's significant. Right? At least delayed something for 700 years. Number 12. Okay, The finally. Battle of Shupong. Back to Taking some Taking place during the Chinese resolution. Civil War, the Battle of Shupong was fought between the Republic of China and the People's Liberation Army, led by Communist Revolutionary now. Mao Zedong. Following the two months of fighting, the Republic of China Army was left devastated. As a result, Kuomintang. the Republic of China relocated to Taiwan, right. while the Communist forces moved north of the Yangtze River. Nine Took months after the China. Battle of Shupong, Mao officially founded the People's Republic of China. Today, the Chinese Communist Party continues to control the country. This might have changed had the Republic of China been victorious at the Battle of Shupong. Be no communist Number 11. China. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I mean, that's been a momentous thing for Chinese history because, I mean, the end of that civil war brought an end, well, I shouldn't say an end to the um, imperial rule. Imperial rule ended uh, about 30 years before this, but nevertheless, establishment of, you know, the China that we know today. Um, yeah, that, that's significant. So I think that's good. Yeah. All right, Siege of Orleans. All right, let's get some. Siege of Orleans. Between no, the 14th Orleans. and 15th centuries, England and France were war. embroiled Joan of in the Hundred Years' War. A turning point came when the English laid siege to the city of Orleans in central France. On April 29th, 1429, Joan of Arc, a French peasant girl who claimed she Mila was Jovovich. destined to rescue the country, arrived in Orleans. Nine days later, the siege was lifted. Burned While the, the English still held power in the region, the French victory boosted morale, and the French army swelled with volunteers who wanted to fight under Joan. The English end up winning now. It effectively prevented the English from conquering France. The Hundred Years' War came to an end shortly after, with or, France yeah, victorious sorry, and England abandoning their ambition to claim the French throne. Basically, England will have to stick to the English Isles because they controlled a lot of what today would be northern France. Sorry, I got that backwards. Yeah. Northern South America was... By the way, what do you think about with, like, Bolivar? You know, what if there was that, that idea, the Gran Colombia, have you heard of that? Where basically those, like northern northern and northwestern i guess you get panama in there um countries unifying into one state it was supposed to be it was this like idea that that it would be like a united states like a, like a united states of south america right and be able to like you know have all of those resources together that it could like rival that that was like the inspiration like with Bolivar, like create like a United States. Never happens, there's too much fractioning, but what do you think, I don't know, what do you think of that idea? United the Gran as Colombia Gran Colombia, with Bolivar as its first president. He Number nine, the Battle of Tool. Ooh, it's a good one. I like this one. 
Okay, good choice here. Um, good one on the last one. Uh, very important for Latin American history. In the early 8th century, the Umayyad Caliphate conquered Hispania Most of the battles have been a good choice. On Gaul, pushing their way up through what's now southern and central France. The Moors saw Europe as easy prey, a land defended by barbarians who were too busy fighting each other. Fought on October 10th, 732, oh well. the Battle well. of Tours saw Francia's leader Charles Martel lead his army to victory against Charles Martel. Numbers. Charles the Hammer the Frank. nailed down his victory with a covert mission behind enemy lines. If it wasn't for Pope his strategic for prowess, the Umayyad Caliphate would have invaded deeper into Europe, and Islam would have likely become its dominant religion. Historians have credited yeah. Martel with preserving Christianity, although there is continued debate over the importance of the battle. I have it was a stunning this. victory at the Battle of Tours that earned Martel the nickname Charles the Hammer. Number eight. So the, the, what they're saying with the controversy, at least from what I've understand with Battle of Tours, first off, that the Umayyad forces, I think, were not all that big. And, like, it was never really highly invested in by, you know, the Islamic Moors. So Tours is actually pretty far away from Spain. So they, they had Spain, right? And they were going up into mid to, to northern France. And... But yeah, it was stopped. So like hypothetically speaking, it would say that, you know, the Moors and Islam would have spread into, uh, you know, into into France. But we also know like under the Moors that like Christians and Jews still lived uh, relatively peacefully, you know, in 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 Spain and stuff like that through the 700 years that the Moors are going to be there. But anyways, yeah, I've heard that it maybe it may be not as big. It was probably a bigger deal for like morale and like publicity probably for the Franks there um, that it definitely makes the Franks friends of the Christian church. And the Franks were one of the, the, the kind of early major like Germanic tribes to really convert to Christianity. And with them creating that alliance, this also is going to pave the way for creation of the Holy Roman empire. Like it was Charlemagne um, who's going to come a few years later. So anyway, battle all the Somme super deadly. So now, is it the most infl or important battle of this, of the World War One? I? I almost want to say the Marne, just because, like, if that battle, which was one of the first major uh, first battles of the Western Front, like, if Germany had won that and taken over, you know, Paris, you know, France would have fallen. World War One could have actually been over by, you know, uh, Christmas of 1914, the first Christmas, just like people thought it might. But the battle Somme for the deadliness. Somme. The infantry on the Somme were led to believe that between the damage already inflicted by the bombardment and the covering fire of the barrage, their journey across no man's land would be little more than a stroll in the country. The First okay. World War included many famous battles, including the Battle of Verdun oh, and the Battle of Amiens. But battle. one of the most impactful was the notorious Battle of the Somme in northern France, lasting 140 days. It was one of the deadliest battles in history, leaving one million men wounded or killed. Almost immediately, German barrage oh, fire battles. rained down with devastating accuracy on the British Death with no positions. movement. Despite the terrible cost, gains. the battle saw the French and British front lines advance by just six miles. However, the bloody devastation... Just, just think about that. A million people die to go six miles. That just summed up what World War I was. It's just like... Oh my god, I don't know. ...did have an enduring it. impact on how the war was perceived. It included the deadliest day ever experienced by the British Army when over 19,000 soldiers were killed. It signified that World War I... The only I way you can do that, like, th to get that many dead, you have to have horrible leadership, right? Like, let's just send them all in against into no man's land against German machine guns and all that. Like, it's so freaking dumb you know anything experienced uh, in old history. tactics whatever it old tag tell my students this with world war one old it's, it's like this formula okay new weapons old tactics equals bloodbath that's what world war one was it's strategic value in human terms the somme had been a military disaster number seven the Ugh. battle of gettysburg <laughs> all right <laughs> Gettysburg. All right, we're getting very American centric now. We've had these like world changing, history changing battles, and now we're gonna get Gettysburg <laughs> battle in American Civil War. Which, okay, what would happen if it went the other way? Okay, it's a very northern battle, but like maybe the South gets its independence. I mean, is that a bigger 
potentially, I don't, it probably wouldn't have even had. Americans still probably would have pushed back eventually, right? Would this have been the end of the Civil War? I don't know. Is this a little American centric over again? Over three days in July of 18. I mean, it's a deadly battle. The Battle of Gettysburg is considered a major turning point in the American Civil War. It is a turning point. Same it is true. Passion that built our nation. But globally, what would this do? It apart. The third day of fighting if saw the famous Pickett's Charge, a failed infantry assault from the Confederates. Dude, this Wars defeat significantly awful, dwindled the army's numbers, and Robert E. Lee led his forces back to Virginia. His hopes of invading the North squashed. They're just targets. We did invade the North. Union artillery. The attack that will come to be known as Pickett's Charge Pick is old. being blown Pick it down. The 50,000 casualties makes the Battle of Gettysburg one Deadly. of the costliest in American history. The Confederates' defeat at Gettysburg cost them the North and served as a major blow to morale. The United States would look very different today had they emerged victorious at Gettysburg. More than 50,000. I guess. Do you, do you think the North would have lost the war, though, if Gettysburg was there? Civil War nerds, what you got? Guilties. Robert E. What Lee's bold invasion of the North has failed. Number six, the Battle of Cajamarca. Cajamarca. All right, Peru. Oh, rip. Inca Empire right here. All right, anyways, yeah, I was asking about Gettysburg. Cajamarca, okay. Uh, number six in all of them is going to lead to the fall of the Inca, but. Cajamarca. Anyway. Although it's sometimes referred to as a battle, it's more properly called a massacre. In yeah, 1532, Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro invited the Incan ruler Atahualpa to a feast in Guns, Cajamarca in clip. northern Peru. But he makes a fateful decision. Doesn't arm his defenses. soldiers should not carry weapons. Yeah, in a show of good faith, dumb. Atahualpa and his retinue of several thousand arrived in Cajamarca on November 16th un unarmed. Whereupon okay, so this, oh wait, no, Pizarro's no, no. men fired on them. Between 2,000 and 7,000 died in the massacre. Atahualpa was captured and his army destroyed. As the, the most litter falls, parts of the Pizarro story. himself captures Atahualpa. Eventually, the Spanish executed, executed him. Yeah. Pizarro yeah. made Atahualpa's wife his mistress. The Incan Empire collapsed. Its lands were seized by the Spanish Empire and its residents sent to work as slaves in Spanish mines. With Atahualpa dead, the conquistadors went on to colonize the rest of Peru. Number five. Well, the difference is like... Okay, if if this battle had gone differently, would the I want to go back to this one clip with this priest right here. In a show of good faith, at the Okay, this part. But uh, you know, the question of like, okay, if the Inca had defended themselves there, would it have like stopped the colonization of the uh, of for the Spanish or the Inca? No. And the big reason why is this battle, yeah, some people are going to die, but we got to understand the reason the Inca um basically get destroyed and taken over is because of disease. The Spanish brought disease that kills 90% of them, right? So, I mean, one thing, and that disease actually had already had already um, made it well into the Inca Empire before Pizarro was even there. The disease spread faster than the, the Spanish because of all the trade routes and stuff. Um, but that would have gone through and just annihilated them anyways. Definitely would have, uh, it definitely... Um, ushered on it being quicker because they actually take Atahualpa in this. They ransom him. That's what they did. They basically took him hostage there in that in that surprise attack and said, you know, fill up this. It's something like fill up this room here in your palace with gold, or we're gonna kill you. And from what I heard, that like that basically happened. They got all the treasures and stuff, and the Spanish were like, oh, you did it. Um, well, we're gonna kill you anyway. So they end up strangling him. So. Anyway, um, the disease, unfortunately, would have killed the Inca probably no matter what. Um, this story right here is an interesting one. We don't know if it's true or not, but it's said at that meeting, which is one of the first of the Spanish uh, with the with the Inca. And it was uh, the story was this is a priest in this in this clip right here and gave Atahualpa a Bible because um, they were saying, like, by what authority are you here, you know, Spaniards? And this priest comes in and, like, we come from God, you know what I mean? And and they're like, you talk to God? Like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, we we uh, we hear his words. And and Atahualpa was like, well, what? And, and he's like, here, look, you know, he hands him a Bible. Now, this is pretty weird for the Inca because they don't have books. I've never seen a book before. And when he's told, like, these are the words of God, we don't know if this happened for sure, but there's this 
claim out there that said that the um that Atahualpa put the book up to his ear and was like, I don't hear these words that you're saying of. And then hucks the book and says, this book is worthless. And then it was right here where it was supposed to be like the priest was like super offended. He's like, destroy, you can see his clip here, destroy these dogs who don't respect things of God. And it said at that moment, the ambush started. So like, was it this crazy misunderstanding that led to this? We don't know for sure, but it is an interesting story that would exemplify though, how different these cultures were as they developed on different sides of the planet. And his but there were no writing or Books in the game on November 16th. Here, let's go back to the Spanish exit. next one. Here, so, what was the next one? Waterloo? In Spanish mines. With Atahualpa dead, the conquistadors went on. I don't know if I put this to the rest of Peru. Just Number because five, of the Battle of Waterloo. Waterloo. Coalition forces won many decisive victories right. during the Napoleonic Wars, including the Napoleon. Battle of Trafalgar. But nothing compares to the Battle of Waterloo. Don't you guys think Napoleon would have fallen anyways? Right? Like. Battle of, like at Leipzig, isn't that more important because like the strength was stronger than now? From what I understand, wasn't Napoleon a lot weaker though by Waterloo because he had already come back from exile? Was his army, I don't know the, the specific there, nearly as big as it was at like Battle of Nations? Um, at this, like, wasn't he gonna lose anyways? Wellington when he a battle came back from just exile? to the south of a village called. Waterloo. The Napoleonic Wars pitted Napoleon and his French Empire against a number of European states who banded together to defend their land. The war Man, lasted noob. 12 years and effectively ended with the Battle of Waterloo in modern day Belgium. Within minutes, Man, the new Napoleon's Napoleon entire will let down, force huh? is in retreat. The coalition emerged victorious and Napoleon abdicated the Russia, throne just Britain. four days after his defeat. Yeah. The first French Empire collapsed, Europe was freed from Napoleon's control, and went on to enjoy a prolonged era of peace and prosperity. Known as the Concert of Europe, the resulting balance of power remained There's more or other less wars fixed until the, the outbreak 1800s. of World War I a Franco century Prussian. later. An entire continent was changed. The European Empire of Napoleon Bonaparte had been decisively crushed. Number four, the Battle okay. of Hastings. All right, I don't know. You, you heard one of the questions I had about that. So, all right, Hastings. Okay, number four, though. Basically creates the England that we know of. A single battle between a few thousand men permanently changed the course the of Normans. history in England and beyond. William the Conqueror. a thousand years later, 1066 remains one of the most famous years in history. Invading England in from English Normandy history. in northwest France, William the Conqueror defeated King Harold II's forces at Hastings on England's south coast. Harold was killed in battle, and William crowned king the following December. The king was dead. Hence the sobriquet, the Conqueror. Norman rule of England saw the old aristocracy replaced, and Norman French became the language of administration, an influence that can still be seen in the English language today. It sure. also resulted in the eventual the elimination of slavery in England in favor of serfdom. Number three, yeah. the Battle of Do you guys of think that's number four of battles that changed history? I mean, I guess you're going to get pave the way for Britain. Yeah, I, I, I think it could be on this you know, list. Number four is kind of interesting, but because um, really... And, and why I would say it's definitely deserving, too, is obviously, like, Britain's going to be a <laughs> massive power eventually. But, all right, Marathon. Okay, I'm down with this. I'm down with this. Um, preserve Greece Marathon. against the Persians. The Greco-Persian Wars between 499 get and no classical Greece BC if they lose. saw numerous notable battles. However, one of the most pivotal came in the year 490, when Athenians and their Plataean allies faced off against Persian invaders at the town of Marathon. From the mountains high above Marathon, Miltiades and his ten generals had a clear view of the Persian army arrayed beneath them. This was an army over twice their number. Despite being outnumbered, the Greeks secured a surprising victory, is this from a game? pushing like, the Persian what is forces this? back. The Greco-Persian <laughs> Wars would continue, with other important battles, including those of Thermopylae and Plataea. But Greece's eventual victory over the Persians all started at Marathon. The Persians were a broken force. They had never Fair. been defeated by the Greeks. But now thousands of their soldiers lay dead. This paved the way for Greece's classical period, where sure. much of Western well, traditions in art, philosophy, politics, and science originate. Would you would you pick Marathon as the most important one for the Persian Wars? I mean, they had to fight more. This wasn't the last one. Uh, there's going to be more battles for years after this. 
Did you put Plataea out there or, you know? Marathon was a true battle. Probably. A real battle that was decisive and that threw you back the last battle enemy. of the war. Number would be the two, most important, the right? Battle of Galgamela. Oh my gosh, really? The Persians suffered another devastating defeat in the Battle of Galgamela Number two? in October of 331 BC. Having already penetrated deep into Persian territory, Alexander the Great's army of Macedon faced off a final time against the forces of King Darius III. You get bigger than the Granicus River. Yeah. And, well, they don't call him Alexander the Great for nothing. On the other side is an army one fifth the size, led by a 26 year old named Alexander. There's a lot of battles you can put in here for Alexander. Outnumbered, Alexander's superior tactics resulted in a stunning victory. After this defeat, yeah. the Achaemenid Empire collapsed and fell under Greek control. Alexander's empire flourished bit. and allowed the classical Greek period to spread its influence throughout much of the Mediterranean world and West True. and Central Asia. Makes sense. It was the most powerful empire of its time and effectively birthed Western civilization as we know it. For Alexander, the battle of... Uh, birth Western civilization? Not really. It, it, it created the, the Hellenistic period it, it spread some Western culture into like into Central Asia. But really, I would say like the for Western civilization, go back to the Gre Greco uh, Greco Persian Wars, the actual Persian Wars, not not the Alexander's wars would probably be more successful at, you know, creating Western civilization. What it did is brought that it's Hellenism. Hellenism is the blending of like um, all the different cultures of the territories that Alexander had conquered. So bringing in Greek culture, blending it with Persian culture and Egyptian culture, even bringing in some of the Indian culture, um, which was fantastic uh, because there's going to be, you know, a, a scientific explosion because of the transfer of knowledge and all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, overall, the Alexander's conquests were very important for history, um, for sure. But yeah, uh, anyway. Galgamila. So it's worthy being on a tough final time. decisive battle. Is this battle specifically, like, for number two? I don't know, but... All right, South Park. Um, my it, It's Stalingrad, isn't it? I mean, it would have been on a top Before 20, we continue, right? be sure to subscribe to our channel or and the D-Day to get Ooh. notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos. Which one should it be? If you're on... It should be Stalingrad, I think. If for of the two, but I wonder if they're gonna pull the like Western European card and throw D Day. On your here. phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, okay. the Battle okay. of Stalingrad. The Allies. <laughs> Except they're showing Normandy. The <laughs> invasion of Normandy on June 6, okay. 1944, right. led to the liberation of France and victory on the Western Stalingrad Front. was before that. But it was the earlier Battle that. of Stalingrad in southern Russia that turned yeah. the tide of the war. On August the 29th, 4th Panzer mounted a major offensive through the center of the salient. Do you think this is number Stalingrad. one? After five Important in history? bloody months of fighting, with an estimated two million casualties, the German forces surrendered to the Soviet Union on February 2nd, 1943. It's the most important Hello? battle of World War II. I, I'm firm believer of that, for sure. You know, and maybe it's just too recent to say, like, how big of an impact would it have made, you know? Because some of that stuff we're talking about in these, like, ancient battles are ones that are going to ripple through what we know are thousands of years of history. So, yeah. Last pockets of resistance in the north. Not surprised to see not this liquidated all. until February This is what I would have predicted on this list. And only then at the cost of several From thousand Washington. more lives. This marked a devastating defeat for Nazi Germany and its allies. Yeah, they not never only recovered. did it reduce numbers and morale, it forced them to reshuffle forces throughout occupied Europe. Hitler later blamed Stalingrad for his impending defeat, and historians tend to agree with him. And he blamed all the people there. They're like, they were all, all the, the soldiers, they were all cowards and all this stuff, but they got like just mowed over, like just, you know, and, and the Germans had been successful up to this point. They thought, you know, Hitler and the command thought that they were going to be invincible and like, no, Stalin was like, nah, I don't care if we throw out we meat might shields, not right? We recognize a world where Stalingrad had fallen. In the coming months and years, it would find itself fighting increasingly alone, deserted one by one by its Axis partners, and facing a red Little army tonk. that had gained new reserves of strength from its victory in Stalingrad. Deadliest battle in Do history. Do you agree with our picks? 
Check out this other yeah, recent clip from Watch Mojo. All right, final uh, final thoughts. So yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to make a top 20 battles list and have everybody agree upon it. It will be interesting to see more of a consensus of historians. I don't know what they use, you know, where they get their information from. Is it just from the editors of Watch Mojo? But again, with Watch Mojo, you're going to get a lot of American-centric stuff and very Western-centered stuff. But they did throw some stuff from some other cultures. We got some stuff in South America. Not a lot coming out of Asia um, uh, there as well. But yeah, I, it's not my list. It's definitely not my list. Um, but... You know, I'd have to take some time more to think about that. But I want to think, I want to know what uh, what you guys think. If you want to do a top 20 list down below, go for it. That's kind of a lot. I'm down. If you want to throw down a top five or top 10 in the list, love to see what you guys got underneath. All right. With that, well, you all will see you next time.